Hi, right, thank you, thank you. Uh, so nice to see everybody all, um, all still lively after three days of this conference. I'm uh, personally exhausted, but, but we'll bear through. This is great, this is great. Um, I, I'm Mike, I work, on the, uh, I work on Blender, specifically the uh, viewport project for 2.8. And uh, thanks, Yalti. <laughs> All right, and I wanted to, um, I know 2.8 is, is quite a ways off. We just did 2.7.8. There's probably gonna be a 2.7.9 sometime in the future, but 2.8 is where really the, uh, the focus is for big changes, for big things, and we wanna do something cool with that. And so I wanted to talk a little about, about kind of where, we, where we're at right now. And um, so last month, we met here in Amsterdam for a little while and uh, worked out, um, kind of the design of what's going on. A lot of that was technical design, but a lot of it was kind of artist-centric of what do we want, like what's the whole point of, of doing this thing? And we came up with this task-driven viewport design. Basically, instead of having to switch a bunch of modes and trying to get exactly what you want on screen, um, it will be a little bit smarter and figure out what you're doing and show you what you need to do to make that task a little easier. Um, and we wrote about that on the uh, code.blender.org. Some of you have seen that, I hope. And uh, we've seen a lot of really good comments and good feedback on that. Um, another big part of it is an OpenGL upgrade. And this has been coming for a long time. We finally, finally moved up to 2.1, which is about 10 years old now. Or it's, uh, yeah, it's about 10 years old now. We finally moved to that last year for uh, version 2.77. And uh, last year at this conference, we kind of had a round table and said, well, what are we gonna do next for 2.8? It's gonna come out in more than a year from now, so where, where are we gonna be at? And we went ahead and decided to go with 3.2. Since then, we decided to go to 3.3, which is essentially the same hardware, just a little bit, a little bit better version. And uh, that's really gonna help us bring open subdiv to the Mac, to across platforms, and to enable techniques that we just can't do today with 2.7. Um, another big thing that's gotten a lot of excitement is uh, the physically-based rendering branch uh, from Claymont. Are you around here? Uh, hey, back there. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, some, there's been some really good examples, some artwork, even a, a short film that was at the Suzanne Awards this year was all made in that. And basically, that, that's really cool because you can... Uh, while you're working on a thing, you don't have to do a render. You don't have to think, what's this going to look like once I'm finally done? Because it, everything just works in real time. And that's, that's really cool. And so we're definitely bringing that into uh, the 2.8 fold. And uh, yeah, he's going to help us do that. Uh, a lot of the work right now happens in the Blender 2.8 branch, which is separate from the master branch, so that we can do these small point releases until it's ready. Because it is, you know, it's a large project. It's going to take a while, and we don't want to make everyone wait for the next release. Uh, some of the goals here, um, since we're allowed to do a bunch of big changes, we want to make everything really smooth, really responsive. Um, so that's a performance thing, and it's also a, a usability thing. We want the visuals to be super high quality, a lot better than what we've got today. Um, there in the viewport. Um, and a big thing is task-appropriate visuals, which I talked about a little bit, and we talked about on the, the code blog. Um, and for developers, we want to make it a lot easier to develop new techniques, to use these new features, and combine them in interesting, interesting ways. Because right now, everything is this huge tangle. Like, when you go to draw the 3D view, there's all this stuff, and it's like, if, if, if this, and these other situations, and all these hacks in there. And we really want to get rid of that, because it's, it's really hard to add things and to change things right now. Um, it's very active development in the 2.8 branch. Um, we're still very much at the beginning or maybe, maybe about here. But uh, release on this side of the screen, um, we're really looking forward to that, but we've got a long way to go. Um, and some of the changes that are out there right now, because I didn't want to just talk about you know, things we plan to do or things we intend to do, um, there's, there's things out there right now. This is the first screenshot of 2.8 that uh, found up on Twitter, which is great. Blendify put this up, and it kind of shows the difference between the old and the new. And when I first saw this, uh, he was talking to me on RSC, and I was like, well, yeah, it, it's a little bit different, but I can't, you have to look closely here. But there was, still, there's some response to this, some excitement about this. If you look really close, you can tell the difference. But uh, I'm going to do a live demo uh, towards the end of this and kind of show off that a, a little bit better. Um, other surfaces, here's uh, from the PBR viewport. Um, 
uh, from the short film that you guys all saw. It's very cool. Very cool. And this is the last slide of my presentation that has anything to do with realism or PBR. So, <laughs> Because uh, a lot of people say, well, why are, you, why are you guys spending all this time, all this energy on making the viewport fancy, making it look a little pretty? Isn't that just eye candy? How does that help me do my job? And a lot of people are, are skeptical of this. And you know, a lot of people aren't making games, they're not making real-time content, and so what good is all this new stuff in the viewport? And I hope by the end of this um, that you'll at least be on board a little bit with me on this. Because there's other things you can do that are not PBR, they're not realistic, they're not for real-time games. When you're designing a character, for instance, of the silhouette of that character, making it unique, making it interesting, and making it distinguishable from the other characters in your, in your group, is, is very important, and I've, I've seen artists do some kind of tricks to do this, to be able to see this while they're working in 3D. Um, something like turning, turning, uh, enabling lighting, but turning all the lights off, or changing the material to do something like this. But uh, I think it would be really great if we could just say, I just want to see this in silhouette real quick, and not have to mess with anything else, and it just works. And so we're going to make that. And there's lots of, I heard a woo, I heard a woo, is that somebody? All right, thank you, thank you. And um, uh, because it's really important in, in character design, here's a bunch of examples. You know, all these stand out, all these are recognizable, and even there's some, uh, there's some sets of guys. We've got Pinky and the Brain down here, we've got Ren and Stimpy up there. When you're designing a set, you want them to kind of work together. And, um, but it's not just character design. If you're doing game development, uh, you have a, a set of weapons you want to have really unique things, so you can spot it way over there and be like, oh, shotgun, got it or units, or other items, things like that. So uh, silhouettes is, is, a, is part of your workflow. It's not, you're not going to spend a lot of time in this, but it'd be nice to just have that automatically work. And, um, <laughs> and, so <laughs> and so part of this, part of this project, we're, we're thinking big. We're thinking, you know, OK, we're, we're moving up in technology. We're using the technology better. We can kind of we can push things a bit further and decide what, what old hacks we want to get rid of and, um, and kind of some, some new areas we want to go into. Um, and this, this, there's been a conversation about this over the past year since there was a declaration that wireframes are dead and are going away and that nobody ever uses them anyway. And there's been a lot of reactions. I, I gathered some, uh, some different people's opinions here. There's an actual quote, actual quote from the X-Files here. Um, and some people are, are very upset about the way things work right now. And so they definitely want change. They want something different. Um, but this is, this is the reaction I've seen most often, is the, when, when somebody says, we're getting rid of wireframes, we don't need it anymore, people come with, uh, they, they can say volumes about how they use them right now. And I've, I've seen you use them, yes, yes. And so, and so it's a big part of the way people work, and a lot of people don't want to live in a world without wireframes. And I'm not sure if SpongeBob is really talking about wireframes here. I just kind of pulled this, but I can assume he is. Um, and so here's what we've got right now. Um, can we pull the lights down a little bit? Because it's hard to see. Because, you know, we see Suzanne here. Or I might have just needed to put some extra. Yeah, we can barely see this. But um, all the slides for all these talks are available online if you want to look closer. So we see Suzanne here. There's other objects that I, I can't see, at least from here. But um, I can see them on the screen. So we've got some basically unselected, there we go. We've got some unselected objects here, and we've got uh, Suzanne selected uh, with a lot of detail. And what we see, this is what we have today. And what we see here is, is just a bunch of lines. And we see there's some shapes here, and there's some other things here, and there's Suzanne popping towards the front, because that's what we got selected, and that's what we're using. But you can't really make sense of it at a glance. You can kind of figure out what, what the relationships are here, but at a glance, you can't really make sense of it. Um, because, because really, there's this, just, just this jumble of line segments. And, and this is from an actual mesh, which I'll show later, but you, there's no way to tell what's going on here. And it's just this, just kind of this amorphous blob of line segments. And this is what we're looking at. This is what we're working with. And if you have really high density meshes, that even gets worse. You just have these clusters of pixels that are either on or off. And there's, there's no information here. There's just something on the screen. And you can't really work with it. And so I was, I've been thinking about this a while. Uh, what if we took you know, what we have right now, exact same pixels, exact same everything, and just pop some new colors in there? And so now, oh, yeah. 
And so now this adds a lot more information here. We can, we can see it, uh, depth warts properly. We can see what's in front and what's behind, what's the front of a mesh, what's the back of a mesh, um, which objects are inside other objects, with or, which are behind. And a lot of the relationships here are very clear. We got nice uh, contours around the edges and all that. And I got this working a while back, but I uh, didn't make it part of Blender yet. So uh, I was looking for something that was a bit beyond a simple test mesh. Um, I found, uh, can anybody tell what this is, really? I saw uh, there was a post on Blender Nation the other day, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, very cool. Yes, Cosmos Laundromat Island. This is actually a. Um, this is a. <laughs> this is a, uh, a fragment of a statue from uh, Palmyra, in Syria. There's this company doing 3D scans there and, and doing some, um, basically, uh, having cultural artifacts and, and digitizing them so we can all experience these things. A lot of things are just so people around the world can experience it, but in certain places, let's experience it now while it's still there. And. And this is, this is a nice mesh. I just did wireframe because it's not very good looking. But I but, uh, did the same thing. I said, what if we took this, these same pixels and everything and just pop some different colors in there? And it's a bit of a subtle difference here. But even there, you can see the eyebrow ridge. You can see the curls of the hair. It's a head sideways, and his jaw is gone. But, but you can see a little bit more just at a glance what's going on here. Same angle, same model, exactly the same. And uh, this got me thinking. I was like, well, let me, get, let me get a nicer mesh. So I found this guy, Thor. He's taking a little sit-down break. Um, and I found both of these on, um, oh, where did I find these? Check the slides later. And, um, and so I looked at this guy. It looks pretty nice. This is just a standard viewport that we have today, um, just textured and lit. And popped it in a wireframe. And that's where I got that image of just pixels on or off. It's a segment of this. And I wanted to do the same thing here, uh, take the same thing, same pixels, and just pop some different stuff in there. And now you can kind of see the forms take shape. You can see the face. You can see whatever that is he's holding. You can see where the arms are. And it's just not it's just this, this amorphous blob. And these aren't renders or anything. This is, this is right in the, in the viewport live. Um, another, another kind of thing you do with edges is you want to see the surface, but you also want to see the edges overlaid with it. And this is a picture, actually, from a bug report somebody sent in. Um, because here you can see the, these, these smaller kind of ramping surfaces in the middle, those edges are not supposed to poke through. Those are, those are edges from the thing behind it. But because of depth precision and, and just numerical precision, they do poke through. And there's no real magic fix to this uh, beyond going to uh, new techniques they were introduced by this uh, Danish researcher, or this group of Danish researchers, back in 2006. NVIDIA did a, a geometry shader implementation in 2007. And, um, and we really needed something like that. And so I started working on it. And this is what I came to the conference with. My, this is my prototype. This is what I had working um, on the airplane here. And I was like, OK, I'm going to get something going by the time, by 2 o'clock Sunday. And, uh, and it took a long time. So by, this is a Friday night. This is Friday night, and so this is um, working in the viewport. This is um, using geometry shaders. But what, what we see here is the tessellated mesh. This is just triangle meshes, which is, which is, which is what's described in the papers. And um, it's in that limitation, like, do your homework, and you can do a little bit better than this. And so I thought, oh, I'll do a little bit better than that. And so here it is with actual polygon edges. And this works. No, there's no poke through. There's no anything else. And this is the kind of thing that can only be done with the OpenGL upgrade. Um, because we can't, like, this is definitely a 2.8 only capable feature. And I got this working about um, 30 minutes ago, upstairs. <laughs> um, but this is great. This is working, and this is, uh, is going to be part of 2.8. And there's something else here that I'm going to save for the demo that I can't really do. And so revisiting this eye candy thing is, are these things really just for looks. I mean, none of these things were, were fancy. None of them even had materials or textures or anything. Uh, but these are really ways that I believe will help us, um, will help all of us work. Um, when the things on screen aren't deceptive, when they're not saying something, when they're not showing something that's not actually there, when they're showing all the things that are there, and when they're kind of showing relationships but not taking up any more UI or any more um, space on the screen as they were before. So instead of eye candy, I like to think of them as veggies, because they're good for us. They're delicious. They're there. They're edible. 
And because it's not about looking pretty, uh, that's not the point of this. I, I mean, I think the, you know, the before and after, I think the, the after looks better. But that's not the point. The point is that it's more accurately showing what you're working on. And that's the important thing, is what you're working on, I want to see that, I want to think about that, but I don't want to have to look at the screen and try to figure out what I'm looking at. The, that should be taken care of uh, by these wonderful GPUs we have these days. And, um, and really free up our brain, free up our thinking um, for what we're actually wanting to think about instead of just figuring out what's, what's being shown. Um, and I'm going to skip that for time, uh, but like I said, these slides are available. Um, and kind of some things we can use here, uh, in, the, in the wireframe example, the first one is definitely the use of color to pull things forward and back and to show relationships. Um, a lot of these are I didn't show here, but See slides, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, and another thing, this is a little bit shifting gears here, is um, someone was asking for this uh, outside on the sidewalk last year, and uh, Delay actually got this working uh, several weeks ago, is um, if you can see what's going on here, we have a, a cycles preview, um, but we still have UI and things layered on top of it. We have the grids, we've got selection outlines, we have widgets, and so you can work in a cycles preview live, but still have all your tools available, and still have you know, all the UI there. Mm -hmm. and, and we plan on doing a lot more of this kind of stuff. Um, I'll go into this real quick. Real, real quick. Um, basically, we, we are upgrading our requirements. We're upgrading the software. We're trying to do new things. And so um, a lot of people using, using older stuff or lower-end stuff, uh, they're curious about, you know, is this, am I going to be able to run it? And we're actually we're reaching real far back. Um, if you're running on AMD, uh, it goes all the way back to when they were ATI. Uh, back to 2006, anything from there up is going to be able to run the new stuff. Uh, NVIDIA the next year. Um, Actually, holiday season, right before that, they released a card that'll be able to run it. And um, Intel caught up with this. They've been doing cool stuff since about 2012. And so before that, uh, we can't support that anymore on Intel. But you can still run 278 or 9 or Z or whatever we're going to come up with. Um, on the OS side, uh, I believe we're going to still stick to Windows Vista as the lowest. Um, I have to check with some other people on that. Uh, the biggest change here is uh, we're going from Mac OS 10.6 to 10.9. That's a big leap. That's a big leap. But, um, but a lot of the same hardware is able to run that. It's a free upgrade. And so um, I think it's worth a little inconvenience to upgrade if you're still hanging on to the old stuff. Because uh, the real requirement here is OpenGL 3.3. Anything that can run that, and this is just the things that can run that. Um, and that's what the real requirement is. Um, for all these things. And there's another thing I hear on the forums. It's like, oh, you're choosing, no matter what we choose, it's either too old or too new. And a lot of people say, well, four point something something is out. And so why aren't you guys using that? And really, we are. We're just saying the very minimum, very minimum is 3.3. It'll run on everyone's hardware. Um, it's not going to slow down your new stuff. It's not going to slow down the good stuff. It runs, of course, it runs better on the newer hardware. If you have, if you have multiple cores, if you have a really nice GPU, if you have, you know, the good stuff, yeah, it's going to run great for you. But we didn't want to leave behind a lot of the old, the people that are still using old stuff, or that are, you know, that are hanging on to what they have, because we want it to work really well with whatever you're using right now. Um, I'm going to skip the other thing for after the demo. Five, yeah, that's perfect. All right, I'm launching Blender here, and this is the, the latest actual release. All right, so we've got a, a very simple test scene here. Um, got a couple of monkeys in a box. Very simple stuff. And so I'm going to select you. All right, make that the center. And this is really showing um, something actually off that first image with the, um, with the new smooth shading that's uh, always enabled in the 2.8. And here we, we get a nice... Uh, subdivision modifier on this. So it's not that bad. It's pretty smooth. But once you get close, you can really see the, um, you can see where the polygons are. And that's OK. But if we crank that down a little more, then it gets a little uglier. We can see them popping in and out like that. All right, I just wanted to show that. The same thing in the new version of Blender. 
is 2.8. You know, super smooth, super smooth. But actually, let me center that guy. All right. So it's really smooth, but I'm also going to crank down the, um, the subdivision on that. You still get really nice smooth highlights. And, and what this kind of says to us is that if you're, if you're just doing, like if you want a nice silhouette, yes, you need higher subdivision levels. But if, if all you want is a, a nice smooth surface like this, um, just this new shading is going to allow you to kind of bump down your, your detail levels, bump down your subdivision, and really get by, and you'll be all right. Between flat and smooth? Yeah. Sure. I mean, flat's going to be the same no matter which one you do. Let's see. So flat will be the same here. So here's flat, which is going to look the same in, the, in Blender 2.8 or 2.7, because flat is flat. But in the smooth shading here, um, it's just nice. It, it's doing this per pixel. It just, it just looks nicer. And I think this is a little bit better than the, the sphere image that's been, uh, that's been put out there. Although that, that's awesome that it's put out there and people are saying, oh, that's great, and pulling out their hair and being like, finally. Um, but really, I, I think this shows the same thing a little better. Um, all right. I also wanted to show some other stuff here. Um, let's pop into wireframe mode, my favorite. And, um, and so here we have the standard wires. This is a, I mean, this looks the same as the old uh, blender, but there is a difference here because all this is running in uh, the new OpenGL. This is running with the new APIs underneath. Um, you can't really tell with such a simple scene, but this stuff is blazing fast. It's good stuff. Because it's not touching the GPU. I mean, it's, it's all on the GPU. It's not touching the CPU at all. All the CPU has to do is say, draw that thing that I told you about. And I, I didn't do the UI for this because I was in a bit of a rush. But let's see how far I have to crank this up to get the new wireframes. OK, so here's the new wireframes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree. I agree. I like this stuff. And, um, and so here's the new stuff. And this is, all, this is all real time. This is all good. And this is, uh, this is the kind of thing that we need the new OpenGL for to get these nice um, stuff around the edge. And so we got, the, we got the edges here. We got the front and the back. We got another deselective one down here. It's using the same effect. You can really see it on the cube. Let me select that. You can really see it on the cube very simply. You've got your front, you've got your back, and you've got your silhouette. And all three are different colors. The silhouette's a little bit thicker, so you can, you can, that really stands out. Let's see. But I, I wanted to show a little bit more um, about that task-centric that I was talking about. Let's see, let's go ahead and pop that into edit mode real quick. And this is a very, very simplified edit mode. But let's see, what might not have been super clear here is when we went into edit mode for this one object, the things around it, you're not working on those. So they're still there for context, but they're very much, can you guys see that out there? On the screen? OK. OK, they're, they're very much diminished because um, you want to see where your thing is in relation to the other things, but you don't really care about the details there because that's not what you're working on. But if you switch over this one, of course, everything else is going to fade away. And so these, these kind of things right here where it automatically adjusts what's being displayed and how it's being displayed based on what you're doing. And this is a very, very simple example of that, but, but we want to take that kind of idea and apply it all kinds of places. Um, and, but these, these wire outlines, they're kind of, they're, they're a little ugly. And so that's the other thing I was working on until just before this. And so I think we have to crank it up a little more and pop that into edit mode. And now we have these nice, um, smooth anti-alias lines on all the edges. And uh, we don't have that artifact that we saw before where they poke through other things. Like these edges are literally on the triangles. They're, they're, they're pasted to them. They're tied to them. And so there's not going to be any uh, lines poking through here if you're doing really fine geometry work. And, uh, but what this is showing is the, uh, the triangulated mesh, which is usually not what you want to think about. And so, so this is the Friday night version. Here up one more. And we get the nice polygon edges. And this is, this is harder to figure out than I thought it was going to be. But, um, but yeah, it's working. It's there. And uh, by the time I get home and have a little rest, I'm going to go ahead and put it into 2.8 so we can all use this. Okay. 
All right, so we covered uh, basically, can I run it? And the answer is usually yes. Unless you're running something really ancient and you don't have anything else, I mean, at that point, you're going to have to get something else to run this. But of the vast majority of people, all this is very common hardware. Um, when can I run it? That's a totally different question. And uh, we don't have an exact release date, but we definitely want to have a preview, at least, by uh, the next SIGGRAPH that's coming up in August, usually. So we want to have something to show there. I'm not sure if it's going to be an alpha or, or anything like that. But by the, this time of the conference next year, um, a lot of these possibilities that we're talking about here, I, I can't wait to be able to use them. And we're all going to use them and talking about them and seeing what else we can do after this. Um, and if you're in a real big hurry to see this 2.8 release, a lot of people ask, when's it going to be out? Is it out yet? Is it released? Um, you know, don't sit around and wait. Come help us build it. Um, I, I mentioned bug reports in here. Those really help. You know, that says, oh, this is a problem for people, and this is something we can do about it. Um, anything like that. Uh, go on right-click select and say, hey, this feature would be great. See if it goes anywhere. Um, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, just talk to people on IRC. Talk to people. We have mailing lists about this sort of stuff. Um, and, and Viewport is just one part of 2.8. It's the part that I'm most interested in. But, um, but there's all kinds of other cool stuff going on. So really, if you're interested in getting it out, help us. Talk to us. Let's, let's build it together, because that's, that's the way this stuff works. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. I'm done.